as a confused alderman watched. Smith dropped her coat to the ground and aimed the machine gun she had hidden under it in both hands. In less than a blink of an eye, the night was filled with noise. Before the stunned Gestapo troops could even fire their weapons, the woman had mowed them down. As the black uniformed soldiers fell to the ground, she turned back to the man who had once been her lover. Wait, he demanded. As I said, she announced, the train ride ends here. Do you know what you just did, Alderman demanded. And I'm not through, she taunted. But I gave you everything, he barked. What you really gave me was enough information to sink a few battleships. You were my source. But, think about it, she coldly announced. I used you. You didn't use me. As the woman's betrayal slowly sank in, Smith offered one more bit of advice. You should have never cheated on your wife. There's always consequences. She then pulled the trigger again. Four shots rang out, and a still stunned alderman fell to the ground. We need to hurry, the seemingly satisfied woman announced as she handed the weapon to Holsclaw. What's this all about, the Dutchman asked. The door to the women's room is booby-trapped. If it had been forced open, you and the captives would have been blown to kingdom come. That was the one detail I found out too late to warn you about. So I had to come and save you this way. As Holsclaw's men grabbed firearms, Smith looked toward the house. On top of the door where the women are being held, there's a pin. Pull it up and it disconnects the bomb. Did you hear that, Fritz? The Dutchman called out. Yes, sir. We will go get them as the quartet hurried into the house to rescue the two members of Harold Schneidner's family. Holsclaw turned back to Smith. I guess you'll have to come back with us. I think there's a room for you in London. The woman solemnly nodded. I need a vacation. I still have some relatives outside of Cardiff. Maybe I can stay with them for a while. The Dutchman turned back toward the house and yelled, Come on, we need to get moving. Hearing the click behind him, Holsclaw turned just in time to see Smith's face go ashen white. A single gunshot rang out, the woman doubled over at the waist. A gun in his hand, the man he thought was dead had managed to rise to one knee. A single blast from the Dutchman's machine gun put the Gestapo agent back on the ground. This time there would be no getting up. After kicking Alderman to make sure he was down for the count, Holsclaw hurried over to the wobbly Smith's side. She collapsed into his arms just as he arrived. Guess you can cancel my reservation, she whispered. He didn't have time to reply before the woman went limp. Easing Smith to the ground, he went down on one knee and hesitantly checked her pulse. There was none. We have them, Fritz announced as he led the two women through the home's front door. Move them quickly to our truck, the Dutchman ordered. Are you coming, sir? One of the men asked as they rushed by. I will be along, he assured them. As the underground men disappeared into the field across the road, Holsclaw moved his hand over the beautiful woman's face. Now it was up to God to judge if what the preacher's kid had done for the war effort was too great a sin for her to be admitted to heaven. After closing her eyes, the Dutchman rose and jogged into the shadows.